Hi guys, it's Sarah the Northwood Stitcher. Forgive me for I have not brushed my hair today. I don't think I'm going to. It wasn't quite a pajama day, which would have been nice, but I, I woke up with a panic because we weren't sure if these paving people were gonna finally show up after months and months of back and forth about their schedule. So last week they said they'd be here today. No show. <laughs> so I thought we would get stuck in the house for two or three days while, you know, things cure. And I went off to the grocery store like this, getting all the stuff I needed and thought I'd come home and change into my pajamas, but I didn't. I just, I did puzzles. I did a little reading. I did a little stitching. I finally finished my coffee. And now I thought I'd sit down and chat with you guys and tell you what's been new. <laughs> I, I can't say I've gotten a lot done stitching wise because once again, life interrupts. And um, I just got back from a trip to upstate New York where I went alone. It was a six hour drive. Um, I took a car ferry by myself, which was pretty exciting. And it was a beautiful area. I had to go up there and tour a facility that my mom's interested in living in. And it's really, really nice. So I landed on a Sunday afternoon, drove home on a Tuesday morning after a meeting on Monday, played 20 questions, asked all kinds of pertinent information that I wanted to know about, and stayed at that facility with my mom so we could tour and get a feel for the place. Absolutely lovely. So I, I hope she relocates there. We'll see. Um, let's see, what else was new? Oh, while I was up there, Deb Smith sent me an email with a wonderful invite, and I wish I could have done it. She wanted me to come visit down in Hyde Park, New York. Um, there's a cross-stitch shop that I guess meets on Thursdays, maybe other days of the week too, but they, they're always gathering at this place and stitching, and I would have loved to have popped in, but it just wasn't meant to be. It was another almost three and a half, four hour drive. It's a lot of road work, so it probably would have been longer than that. Um, and I was only there till third, uh, Tuesday, but it's called Deer Hill Cross Stitching Shop. That would have been fun. And thanks for the invite, Deb. Someday our paths will cross and it'd be really cool to meet people. I should tell you guys more often where I'm going and where I might be and when, because maybe I can pop in and surprise somebody. It'd be so cool to even just grab somebody to go shopping with. While I was away for just a few days, I did manage to get to a thrift store. Surprise! <laughs> <laughs> um, maybe 10 minutes, but in that 10 minutes, I did some damage. <laughs> found more cross stitch books. I found this one that I just found in another thrift store. I have the paperback um, version of this. This is the hardcover. It's a really nice collection of stockings. And I can't remember, I think there's 12 different stockings. I wish it would tell me. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen. Maybe fourteen. Okay. But with each turning of the page, there are different stockings, different ornament ideas. It's a lovely book. I originally thought I would gift it to somebody, but now that I have two, I think what I'm going to have to do is take it downstairs, read it as a bedtime book, sleep on it, see what I want to tab to do, if I want to keep the hardcover or the paperback. It's just such a treasure to find stuff like this. So that was one book. Then I also found The Christmas Cross Stitch by Better Homes and Gardens. And I want to say this is 82, oh, 87. So 1987, I know a lot of people will look at stuff like this and say, oh, it's so dated and I'm only doing more modern things, but don't pass stuff like this up. You can get a lot of great motifs. A lot of the retro Santas or Christmas themes or retro anything, Halloween designs, Easter designs, they're coming back into fashion and you can get some really timeless pieces. So if you find a book, pick it up and flip through it. Even if there's just one in there, 
you know it's a good price as long as it's an affordable price tag. The charts these days are going for quite a lot of money. But I wanted to show you love this idea. Those pillows are really cute. You can make them any size you'd like. Oh, this was nice. I can't show you that. Page four. That is the chart. The chart's what caught my eye, but I thought, wow, this is pretty cool. Look at that giant star. And the ornaments are sweet. You don't have to make them into that shape. But the ideas are plenty in this one. I really thought this was sweet. I mean, that would make a nice pillow. It would make just a nice frame piece. You could put that in a hoop. You don't need the fancy matting, although that's nice. I think that would cost quite a bit if you have to go get a mat cut like this. And I think a lot of us have seen this brought back into more recent magazines. I know I have it. I think I have it tab somewhere to do. Wasn't too fond of this bright red, but I think I'm gonna choose a darker red to do this in as a red work. Cause I really thought that was a beautiful Scandinavian type design. So on oh, those some perforated paper ornaments. Those could be for Valentine's, not just Christmas. I think they're supposed to be snowflakes, but I see a lot of hearts in there. A very simple, sweet sampler. Something like that would be so nice to do as a gift for somebody. And it's not going to take months and months to do it. So, yeah, this is just a great little book. 1987. Well, this is kind of scary, though. Look at this one. I don't know if she's smiling or she's going, take the victory. <laughs> I'm not crazy about the doll. But I'm just probably not crazy about dolls. So, Better Homes and Gardens, let's take a look-see for it, 1987. And then last but not least, I really like this one. This was a leisure arts publication, Beyond the Garden Gate. So this was more recent. Do I have a date on this? 1998. Gorgeous florals in here. Let's pull a few. I'm going to show you guys. I love this trio. So you've got two daffodils, an iris. Isn't that beautiful? There's pansies. Oh, I just love that. More pansies. There's a beautiful fruit collection in here. So I guess these are plums and peaches. Those are gorgeous. And it's just a single matted, very nicely done. Then we've got some birds. I think those are cherry blossoms. Just beautiful. Hope I'm not going too fast. Oh, and I really like this one. Might have to do this one. Winter, spring, summer, and autumn. Look at that. It's a chickadee. I'm really partial to the winter and the autumn one, but I think I do all four just so I could have the set. But look at that. I am so ready for fall right now. I drove through lots of areas with 
there's no direct route to get from my place to upstate New York. It's mostly back roads, which was great. There's a lot of little farm stands, but I'd never done this route before. So there weren't a lot of places to stop and pee. I didn't really know my way around. So do I stop at this farm stand or do I try to make it to the next gas station? So I missed out on a lot of things, but if I could do it around October, I think of all the pumpkins I could collect and fill the car with. There were corn, there was corn advertised, zucchini, of course, tomatoes, corn cakes, which I really wanted to stop because I just kept thinking about a hot corn cake with a little bit of butter and honey on it. Yeah, sounds good. So I'm ready for the fall. Oh, and look at this. Look at that sunflower. And the butterfly. Just a lot of great patterns in this book. I really love this. Although I know this would probably give me quite a headache. I don't know if I have the patience to do a whole floral. I could try. But I love the blue and white vase. And what is that called? Angels, angel lace. You know what I speak you. I think it's called angel's lace. There's roses. This is really cool alphabet. Floral alphabet. Oh my word. Incredible. I needed new books, like a hole in the head, but these were really pretty. And there's just the charts on the back. So that was the three books from the thrift store. And then I found something that I, I didn't know what else to do, but to adopt it and bring it home. Isn't that cool? It's somebody's hand painted ceramic. It's massive. It's heavy. At first I thought, well, maybe this is a music box, but no, I think what it is, is this ceramic comes empty and then you choose a platform with a scene on it that you put in here and paint. Well, you paint it first and then put it in here somehow. But isn't that cute? So they're ice skating. One of them fell down. I need to do a couple of little touch-ups. It's, it's very cute, but I think the kids need some blush on their cheeks. So there's more depth to it. And the sign says no skating, but you can't really see that. And I think I'll put some, something a little brighter in the back, maybe some actual fluffy snow in there. Or, or a little string of lights, something to light it up. It's a table topper. I just love it. It's not signed. I don't know who painted it or what year, but it's a handmade piece. And why it was sitting in a thrift store waiting for somebody to come along and knock it off a shelf and break it, I don't know. But it looked at me and I looked at it and it said, take me home. And I said, okay, I will. <laughs> I got it for less than $10. So... Good adoption. I'm very happy. I wish I knew what year it was. I could probably try to look it up. Anybody who does ceramics can maybe tell me. I don't know. I need to put this someplace safe. I don't know where that is. On the floor for now. I cleaned up my space a little bit and then I made it dirty again, but I wanted to Put up another table. You can see the table over here. There. <laughs> I've set up my spools. So the big spools, I've finally decided I'm just gonna glue them all together because I only had, what, 12? Yeah, I only had 12. So I think I will stitch on those. We're, we're going into colder months so I can stitch them while I'm watching TV. And I think um, I'll take some of your suggestions because I'm so excited about 
doing these either as a stitched piece because Deb actually sent me a beautiful picture, a Jeanette Douglas print to go on these spools. Let me pull it up. I'll try to remember to edit and put this in here so you can see it close up. That is a Jeanette Douglas design. So it's a small spool and there are buttons on either side of the cross-stitched piece and then it is laced in the back of the spool, which I think is really sweet. And I love the little motifs and there's actually a spool, a spool motif on there. And that is a little tomato pin cushion, I think. Yeah, that's a little tomato pin cushion. So I really think that might be something that I decide to do. I think that's really cute. I'll do it on a linen or a Lugana. And then I will turn them into maybe some holders for scissors so I could stick a scissor in the spool or for my counting needles or put a somebody suggested I put a little tomato pincushion on top which I actually have one this will fit perfectly so I need to get a couple more of these how did that go on so that would be a really great idea. So that's my little project station over there. I'm gonna get busy on that. What else happened? Oh. I did get some progress on the Prairie Schooler, you know, the Boo to You, the series of eight ornaments. So those are the top four that I did previously. These are the ones I've worked on this month. So I did the skeleton completely, stitching white on white or off white was not fun. My cat is coming along. I'm gonna do another 10 rows. How many do I have? I think I have 25 or 23 rows to do. I'll work on that. I really wanna get this done completely by this weekend, by Sunday, because then I have two more to do. I'll show you the ones. So I'll have the owl and then the haunted house. Is that right? That's right. <laughs> I have a look. And then when those are done, I am taking this thing off the frame, cutting them up, and I'm going to start, well, finishing them off into ornaments. Because in the same project bag, I've now had forever. I have all of these. I don't know if you guys remember I showed you those. Let's go through these really quick. So I need to make these up into ornaments as well. And I think these would be so cute for my Halloween um, tree. I wish I knew what I did with my board. Sometimes I clean up too well. I don't know where it went. But I have these two. These are prairie schoolers as well. I'm not sure how I'm gonna finish them off. They may all be different, that's fine too. Another little kitty. That's really cute. I think I did these with Sulky. I'm pretty sure I used Sulky. And then this one I put a little metallic in the ears. I think the ears are supposed to be just like a lighter brown, so I put a metallic in there. And a little witch. So these will be a lot of fun to finally finish up. I have no idea what kind of Halloween fabric I have, so it'll be fun to maybe take a little drive over to my fabric shop and 
see what I can find. So that is my Boo to You by Prairie Schooler. Work on that tonight. <clears throat> and then, oh, let me put my pattern back on there. There's nothing worse than getting all the way downstairs from the craft room and thinking, oh, I left my part of my project upstairs. Ah! It's one thing if I need to get my steps in. It's another if I don't need to get my steps in and I'm tired. Okay, so that's done. Mm. Oh, the uh, Mill Hill pumpkin not coming along very well. I need some motivation. I think I need to give my husband permission to get on my case. <clears throat> now he's gonna be having hip surgery soon, so I'll be sitting by his side and watching his every move for a while, so maybe I can get it done then. But this is as far as I've gotten. Not very good. I really need to get moving on it. And if you remember that orange, <laughs> I have to fill in an awful lot. So there's a lot of orange that's in between all of this and goes up to the edge of this perforated paper, which creates that border. So there's quite a bit to do. I think once I get some of the black stitch done, then the filling in will be much easier. <sighs> That's what my hope is. I haven't even separated the beads because I'm so far from, so far away from the point of having to put the beads on still. But I have a little set up, so I am ready to do the bead work. I'll show you guys how I do it. And this little guy, I think I showed you from the thrift store. I put some stickle, crystal, sparkly stuff on him. So now you can see his trim on his hat and his jacket. And even on the tree, it sparkles a little bit more. I just love how it came out. I think he'll probably, he's a bit heavy. He might hit the windshield. I was thinking originally he could ride on my rear view mirror, be my muse for holiday shopping. But with all of the holes in the main roads around here, I could just see him whapping at my windshield and making a crack in it. So maybe not. I'll do something else with him. Maybe he'll sit in the kitchen and watch me, motivate me. But he's hanging here, even though he was, he's done drying. He's just there hanging out. Mm. I got a new magazine in the mail. I have a uh, subscription to Just Cross Stitch Magazine. And this one came in, it was October. Isn't that pretty? I hope you guys got one. If you didn't, maybe you can go get one. I think you might be able to get it on 123stitch.com. I know they have the specialty issue, so you can get their Halloween issue right now. Um, oh, let me show you that. So this one I got on 123stitch. You see I've got some things tabbed in there. But then this one came yesterday. I might have gotten here earlier, but that's when I went to the post office after my trip to upstate New York. And I really, really like this pattern. I'm hoping it's not a lot of fiddly stitches, but I haven't really gone through it. But there was a really cool one in here. I really like that. That would make a nice gift. It's so pretty. Look at that. I can't wait to get all my pumpkins out. And I was trying to think, you know, if it's going to be September soon, I'll probably pull out all of my fall stuff and all of my 
Halloween fall stitches and I'll do a total dive and show you guys everything in that box of stuff that I've done. So that'll be fun. Oh yeah. It's so pretty. Bigger picture. Love the acorns. And look at this from little jars. That's so pretty. I could see myself adding some beads to that. Some beads would really make it pop. This is really cute. It looks like a quilt over the hills when the trees start turning color around here. It's phenomenal. I don't ever take that for granted. I like this one, but I wasn't quite sure. I had a little trouble seeing what was going on in here, but maybe it's because it's just too close up. It does better on film. Now I see the mice. Awfully cute. What else was in here? There's so many things. This was just lovely. It's too small. Hopefully you can see it. You see that ornament with the wind chimes? I thought that was really interesting. It just brings back so many sensory things for me. You know, the color of the leaves falling, the nice breeze in the fall, the wind chimes. I think I might have to do that one. It's a really cool moth. Mother Nature Witch, I guess. love purple fabric. <laughs> Isn't that cute? Might have to do that one too. This is something you should probably run out and grab. Which is welcome. That reminds me. This reminds me of some tea dyed or coffee dyed fabrics that I've done. I just ordered a whole bunch of writ dye colors um, and the, what do you call it? The color fasting bottle. So I'm going to start dyeing some fabrics, hopefully in the next three weeks. Depends on, I ordered the fabric after I ordered the dye. So we'll see when all the supplies come in, but I'll, I'll film some of that and we'll make some weird colors together. I got some really cheap cloth off of Amazon. So we'll see how that goes. These are some really neat ornaments. This is done on a perforated plastic. And then the rest are just some flat board and pillows using the mat board or the foam board. And then they introduce, this came in several parts. So I guess with different issues, you're gonna get different parts of this sampler, Christmas sampler stitch. That's what I call it, it's a sampler scene. It's so busy and so much fun just looking at it and seeing what's going on in there. There's baking and trimming the tree and making snowmen, making toys. That's really cute. And there's even a section in here of stitching cards. But these are like really big. I don't, I don't know if I'm crazy about 
promoting such such a big card. It takes up the whole card front. You don't really need to do that when you're sending somebody a cross stitch. Anything smaller than this is a treasure to give to somebody. But these are really nice because you can frame them. So they do have a section in here with a couple of patterns and a nice article about it. I think there's four patterns. So you do get the ones they show here, the hello, the birds, the bouquet, and the flag. And they're all done on a perforated paper, but you can certainly do it on a perforated plastic. They do it on a paper to keep it a lighter weight because the heavier your card, the more it's gonna cost to send if you wanna send it through the mail. That was it for that issue. So that was the newest one, the uh, Just Cross Stitch October 2023. This one's just as good. So these are actually sitting on my table side next to my stitch chair in the living room. But then I brought down a 2000 issue, March of 2000, Stitcher's World. I have to do it. I have so many on the go right now. So many wanna do's and so many whips. So I really have to get the Mill Hill pumpkin done and these ornaments. And then I just have to do what I wanna do. Maybe this one. It is They did it on a 14 count and it was, design size was a 10 and a quarter by 10 and a quarter. So that's not so bad. And it looks to have about 20 colors. There's not an awful lot of backstitch in it. It's just really sweet. So it's a matter of pulling, it's the only thing I've, I've it's the only thing I tabbed in this magazine, so I know I need to get it done from 2000. Mm. Mm. Oh, sorry guys, I am short on sleep. Is this a bigger picture? Not really, but it's got less interruptions in the... So it says the pedigree of honey does not concern the bee. The clover any time to him is aristocrats, aristocracy. <laughs> and I, I love the little alphabet and the floral border. They did a great job. The bees are very well done. They're not cartoonish. They're very natural looking. I probably would add some silk thread to the wings to make the wings shine a little bit more. But it's awfully cute. So I need to get that done. And I, I think after doing a couple of my bucket dives with you guys, this might be a duplicate. I don't think I've kitted it up twice like I did the, um, the gingerbread ornaments but I do think I have another one floating around here. One of these days, I'm gonna get super organized. I'll pull it out and I'll say, hey, who wants this copy? But I don't know where it is, but I do have this feeling in my head. My head's buzzing with, oh, I've seen this before, I have this before. It's in one of my wanna do buckets. And I'm so grateful to you guys when you comment that you've done the same thing so I don't feel like I'm alone. I've done, I've bought a couple of duplicates and, and not at, you know, wholesale, you know, sometimes just at a thrift store. I, I saw, I saw it there and I liked it and I brought it home and I said, oh, I have that. <laughs> and that's okay because part of it is rescuing something and passing it on to another stitcher, making sure it has a good home. Yeah, it's the only thing in this 
in this uh, magazine. So I don't know if I want to bring it back down. I think I want to keep it here on the table so I can pull the threads, see if I have a cloth or a linen that I want to stitch on. I'll leave it up here. But this is the pile of stuff that's on my table side downstairs. So I thought you guys could help me figure out what I should leave up here to kit up right away and bring downstairs to dream about. The newest ones, the Halloween and the um, October one are gonna go downstairs. I need to look at those, get my other October things done. Oh, look at this. This is from December, 2022. Just cross stitch. The cover looks like this. That's a biscuit that holds the hoop. This is one of those, uh, I guess you would call it a square hoop. It's not really square, but it's a squashed square, soft square. And the part of the hoop where you tighten it, the screw, sits in this little biscuit. So it's a way to stand up your hoop for display. It's really a great idea. But look at the first thing I tabbed. Isn't that neat? So this is just cross stitch, December 2022. 20, Look at the black work. I mean, that should be a real quick thing to do. That would look good on a tea stained cloth. I really like that. They call this intermediate. Oh, I guess because of the black work. If you haven't done black work, it's fun to play with, but you really have to think differently about the placing of the backstitch, because that's really all it is, is a bunch of backstitch. And it's best to start with your, your border or your outline first, and then fill in your black work, because I, I find I pull out a lot to place it just right, but it's fun to do. So yeah, I can see this as intermediate now. They did this on a 28 count Lugana, and the finished size was a 10 and a eighth by seven and three eighths. So that's not too bad. That's so pretty. So that's one that I tabbed down. I think I'm gonna have to leave this up here to do it. And then Christmas gift tags. There were, I tabbed some Christmas gift tags in here that were done on perforated plastic. Meh. Don't know if I'll still do those, but that's the joy of putting a sticky on it and revisiting it. I make cuter ones with paper right now. Oh, but that's really cute. It's a little snowman. I'm not really crazy about snowmen, but that's a cute snowman. So check this little guy out. He's cute. Plus he's got a cardinal on his hat, so he's okay with me. And I don't know, is that supposed to be cactus? It's really cute though. I don't know if you need that in there, but the green color's cute. Oh, excuse me for yawning, guys. A lot of driving. And a lot of, I think just nerves. I'm trying to get, um, my thoughts organized and feel like I am asking the right questions and getting things ready for my husband's surgery. So I think we're, I think we're organized. This is amazing. So in the back of this issue is another, I guess it's a type of black work. Yeah. It's called Elegant Snowflake. Yikes. I know, right? I, I'm i pretty sure I bought some blue dye, but I really love how this blue is, uh, the white on the blue is really dramatic here, particularly with the choice of stitches that they decided to do to give it some depth. And then in the center of these little swirls, they did not put beads there. They did put beads, uh, pearl beads, on the axis points, which are really stunning. So why not do it throughout? Maybe it's too much. Oh, it's so pretty. 
So that's an idea. This this blue fabric is called just Navy Ada from Charles Craft. Really? Okay. It looks lighter than a typical navy. I think I ordered a color called denim. So we'll see how I can soak that. Ooh, oh, look at the chart. Ah! Yeah, I think I will do that. But I am going to take out that tag for the Christmas gift tags. They just don't do anything for me anymore. So I've got two in here. I've got the fall leaves and that gigantic snowflake in the back. And this was the December 2022 Just Cross Stitch issue. So I'm going to leave that up here to get some threads pulled or get something kitted up. Oh my gosh, there's, there's more up here. But wait, there's more. I think I showed you guys this. Did I show you guys this when it came in? Mini masterpieces, 50 different mini artworks. This is such a fun book. I got this on Amazon. You can find it on eBay probably. But there's all kinds of different well-known artworks that you can reproduce in miniature and cross stitch. And I thought that was fun. There's a girl with a pearl earring. There's the scream, of course, self portrait of Van Gogh. Van Gogh with a bandaged ear also. Sleeping Kitty. Creation of, creation of Adam, the great wave off of Kanagawa. Kanagawa. There's a Monet. Those are quite a few Monets. There, there's some Da Vinci's. I mean, this, this is just cute. I like the little lily one for Monet or section of it. So that's a fun book. This is actually going to stay up here because I am going to kit some minis. What else is in my pile? I think I'm going to have to go take a nap before dinner. Mm. This is the, oh, this is another a special edition. So this is the Jess Cross Stitch Christmas Ornaments from 2022. And I still haven't done anything in here. But I do love it. I love this issue. And then you look on the back and you see all the mill hills that were gonna be new this year. I need that one. A blue jay. Yes, please. <sighs> I have to get that. Quite a few tabs. Let's see what kind of damage I'm gonna do. Small ornament. Oh, these are sweet. Oh, okay. Well, this is cool. If you haven't purchased one of these special editions, they'll give you a section and then they'll give you a whole bunch of little ornaments. And then you turn the page and find another smaller picture with the graph until you get to the next chapter. I didn't tab anything in this chapter, although I do like the car. Oh no, that's not true. I tabbed the Mary in the round ornament. I have an awful lot of these small round hoops and I thought that would be awfully cute to do some of those. And I also like this guy. So I did tab the Mary. I didn't have that car. Let me go put a tag on the car. I don't know what's on the next chapter. And this has got the um, subscription card <laughs> for renewing in the in the way. Get that out of the way. This is called Festive Reindeer. So there's seven different ornaments involving reindeer. 
Absolutely adorable. I think I've got this guy tabbed. It's always interesting to see what my thoughts were when I first looked at the magazine and then go back to see if I still feel the same way. Holiday Critters. I know I've got the birds on this one. So I'm definitely doing this. And I'm definitely doing the Woodpecker. That looks very Charlie Harper-esque to me. And I do love the kitties. Bad kitties. We have had an instance involving a cat in the Christmas tree in this house. My husband blamed the cat. However, when I asked her about it, she said the tree fainted. Maybe it did. This chapter is Holly Jolly Santa. Oh, this is so cute. So there's a couple in here I would do. I would do the round ones. I have so many of those mini hoops. And I think I would do this guy because I have some of that polka dot um, linen and I think that's really nice. That is polka dot linen, right? Yeah, it is. I thought maybe you have to cross stitch it. Ah, let it snow. I tabbed this one. I must have tabbed something in here. I wonder what. What was I thinking? It goes on and on. So here's the snowman chapter or snow chapter. Very, very cute. Um, the next one is Old World Wishes. Season's greetings. You should be able to find this issue for less than it originally was, since this is 2022. Uh, and then the next chapter, Sweet Treats. I might have skipped a chapter or two. Look at that reindeer at the top. Isn't that cute? And the gumdrops. Just a whole bunch of, oh my gosh, there's more. Yuletide in blue. Wow, I like that peace and hope. Oh, and then there's recipes in the back. <laughs> I'm going to leave that up here. I've got June 2023, just cross-stitch. I haven't tabbed anything in here. But this has a very cool Peacock Manor. June 2023 is this issue. And Mother Nature's Summer. So yeah, there's some cute ones in here. I'll leave this one up here. If I don't kit something up from here, I'll probably just put it in my 
filing system and leave it for another day to see what comes. I think that Peacock Manor is cool. Oh, excuse me. October 2022, just cross stitch. That's beautiful too. Look at all those tabs. I didn't do anything out of this one, I don't think. Oh, I, I really want to do this one. This is the Blackwork Pumpkin. Isn't that cute? I have the spools. <laughs> I only have 50 spools. Not like I can make a bunch of those pumpkins. But wow. That would be fun. Okay, so that's why that's tabbed. This is going to come downstairs so I can look at it a lot and get motivated to actually do this little pumpkin. There's an autumn house. Too cute. I love the button hanging hangers. some more Halloween ornaments in here. I got no business looking at these after I just showed you the pile that I have. Oh, the Dancing Witches is definitely a very cool stitch. I love the blues and the purples in here. Incredible. It is a full coverage. Uh, if, you, if you do it with a called for on a 14 count Ada, it's 15 by 13 piece that you start with. But the design size is only 8 and something by 7 and something. Not too bad. That would be a lot of fun. Okay, so this is going to come downstairs because I'm going to look at it a lot with my other Halloween stuff. I see, I see a pattern forming. Ugh. What did I forget? I think that's in, it for my, my stash and stuff. I do have some spools, big spools um, drying because I have glued them together. So I'll show you those next time. I don't think I'll miss any um, videos because I'll, I'll be home. I'll just be doing a rehab with my my poor husband who's very brave. And I think that's about all I, I have. I wanted to do some shout outs, but I can't remember who. I want to say hi again to Lisa, Lost in Stitches. If you've not gone to see um, Lost in Stitches, her floss tube channel, go visit Lisa. She's absolutely lovely. She's got some great stuff. She'll get you motivated. There's also, hmm, ah, the Soulful Stitcher, Melanie Watkins. She has a new video out, blown away by her stuff. She always says she doesn't have much time to stitch, but she gets a lot more done than I do. And who else? Um, ah, Snow Canyon Stitcher, Amy. Go check out her channel. She's got a lot of fun stuff too. And there's a whole bunch of people. I really should write a whole bunch of things down for these, but sometimes I just get talking and I just keep going. Anyway, you guys have a, a great day and happy stitching and be safe.